やっほークレイジーファンの姉さんだよ
uh, won a, a, can a Japanese Academy Award for some sort of movie. And then he also worked as an arranger in the Kingdom Hearts concert First Breath. So a lot of the tracks from the original Kingdom Hearts First Breath concert, uh, he worked on this guy. This guy here. This guy worked on it. So they have like an interview here talking about... It, it's actually a really in-depth interview. I... I guess if I have time, maybe on my vacation or something, um, I could go and try and translate this. I'm sure someone's gonna translate this faster than me. Cause it's a lot. Like, it's like this... Plus this. And then like... Uh, this... Two pages, and then... Like, another page. So it's a lot of a lot to translate, but they they have an interview. They go through like a lot. They talk about like how they met and how they kind of like got together to make this partnership to make the Kingdom Hearts concert a reality, and how they like how they vibe together and what are some of the uh, problems that they encountered while trying to arrange music for a full orchestra concert slash video game into a brass band wind ensemble. So that was really cool. I mentioned uh, previously that there were many, many arrangers who worked on the, uh, the, this concert and for all of the arrangements for the pieces. So, uh, Kaoru Wada is one of them. And then the other one is this guy. Uh, Toru Kanayama, who's this guy. I think he's kind of like, uh, like a senpai or like a die die senpai. Like he's like, he's kind of like a veteran. Because I remember when Yoko Shimomura was talking about this guy. Um, she was kind of revering him as like, like she couldn't believe that she, she could have had, like he helped work on their arrangement because maybe... Like, it sounded like she respected him a lot and that she was really happy that he could work on this project with her. So, I think that's bonus points. I'm gonna try and read out his profile to see what it is that he's so good at. So, apparently he is... Uh... He's been involved with band. Uh, he used to play the euphonium. Uh... Or he still plays the euphonium. Um... Uh, he plays with the Tokyo Wind Orchestra or something like that. Um, and he's like... Kind of going around as a pro performer, I guess? Um... He... He seems to be involved in a lot of jazz ensembles as of late. Like he has this thing called Urban Beat Moliner Edition for Concert Band and Fanfare Band. Black Pepper C. Allen Publications for Jazz Ensemble. But I think he does like a lot of arranging of like jazz pieces and stuff. And does a lot of performances. I'm just reading his thing, so let, let me see if I can read this. So, he has a little blurb here. He has a little blurb here, so let me see if I can read this. Honjitsu wa... Honjitsu wa kingdom... Kingdom hearts konsato second breath ni go... Go raiba itadaki arigato gozaimasu. Sakuhen kyakuka no... Ano... Kanayama desu. この旅はこの世な混雑の Three 
人気を集めているっていうことはしていましたが自分が参加することになるとは有名にも思っていませんでした今回のコンサートではメドレーも含めて三脚を返却していますがその中でも一部の最後に演技されるメドレーはかなりの大作ですので注目を注目してお聞きいただければと思います。20年以上の歴史のあるキングダムハーツの世界で。あがあ推,測が推測によってあ表現できていたらあしあ幸,せん幸せです。あ so, he, so in this profile, the, in his profile, He was saying that he is aware of like how video game music is becoming more and more popular, and seeing concerts with video game music is becoming more of the norm, and that it was always a dream of his to kind of participate.、Uh, so, being able to join the Kingdom Hearts team was like a dream for him.、Uh, and he said that there were like a couple of songs that he worked on, and so he hopes that. Uh, his arrangements could bring,、uh, could express the world of Kingdom Hearts.、Uh, at least the 20 years of Kingdom Hearts. Like, be able to express that. He hopes that his arrangements can do that.、Uh, so, there is、uh, him, and then there's two other arrangers. So, there's Natsumi Kam- Kameoka and、uh, Sohei Kano. So, these are the two. Other arrangers here. Sorry, I you can't see. So, this is Sohei, <laughs> and this is、uh, Natsumi. I think Natsumi, she might, um, she might, you might see her in some of the Square Enix YouTube channel stuff, or, or like、uh, Square Enix music YouTube channel, because she does a lot of work with、uh, Square Enix arranging soundtracks, like from、uh, games into like. Uh, band music or piano music or solo music.、Uh, so, if you are if you're, if you're a fan of Square Enix music and you watch a lot of their YouTube content, you might, yeah,、uh, you might actually see her because I, recognize,、uh, I recognize her from one of the YouTube videos that they had. Like, she worked on like a Chocobo game or something and then、uh, went on to become like working on the Final Fantasy XIV stuff, I guess. Uh, let me check the profile though, just so I'm not making shit up. <laughs>、um, oh, yeah, so she's worked on the Chocobo、uh, Grand, P- Grand Prix,、uh, Live Alive, and Strangers of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. So maybe not necessarily the Final Fantasy XIV team, but she has worked on. Uh, some、uh, Square Enix titles、uh, recently. So she's like a new, kind of like a newbie, like a new,、uh, new recruit in the team.、Uh, so this is the orchestra that played the Siena Wind Orchestra. They also did the recording for the first Breath concert, I believe. I think they did. Um. But yeah, I really, if you ever get a chance to see them when they're not performing anything like of your interest, like they're really good. So even outside of your interest, any of their performances, I think,、uh, are going to be really good. Doesn't matter what they're playing. Because when I watched them play the Kingdom Hearts songs, like, man, they were so talented. So freaking talented. Okay. So these are the, this is like the. Uh, they, so, they had like an interview page for some of the performers in the band and Yoko Shimamura. So, I guess, like, kind of glancing at it, they were, just re- they were just talking about like their impressions of like Kingdom Hearts music and like 
working together. It's a really long interview. Again, like, I don't know. I, I can't translate all of this right now. Like, look how long this is. Like, I can't translate all of this right now. Or read this all out right now, but... Maybe on my vacation, I might try and translate all of this for you guys. But, uh... If you guys like that idea, let me know in the chat. Or in the comments in YouTube. <laughs> let me know if you would like me to translate this. Because I can try my best. I'm not... I'm not a professional translator by any means, so... But yeah, so they have, like, the three performers. They have the clarinet guy, the French horn guy, and the drums guy. The drums guy... The drums guy is Pogs, man. The percussion section was so good. So freaking good. Let me check something. How many French horns do they have? I think in the thing they had like... Three French horns? In the- in- in this- in this picture, it only shows two. But I think they had like three French horns. I'm not gonna lie. Like they had a lot of French horn players. Crazy. Okay. So yeah, they talk a lot. Um they talk about like their impressions of the music. Okay, and then here is the here's the picture from I think the name is Shiro Amano, the manga ka for the Kingdom Hearts manga. Do you guys know about that? This is the artwork from them to celebrate the concert debut or the concert series. You can see Zemnis in the middle being the conductor. <laughs> what do you guys think? Do any of these uh, characters match the instruments that they're playing? <laughs> you think? What do you think? I, I'm i very interested to, because uh, Zigbar and Luxord are standing next to each other. It's such an interesting position to put them in. Uh, also, there's uh, Demix over here on the side. Interesting positioning for those three. Now that we know a little bit more about Kingdom Hearts uh, lore. Um, this is this is another thing from one of the Rangers, like congratulation messages. Um, and then here's the set list. So first they played Hikari Orchestra instrumental version. Then they had Journey of the World Tres. Heroes and Heroines Characters Medley Second Breath version, which somehow had Vanitas' song in there, which is surprising because Vanitas is the bad guy. <laughs> Not a hero or a heroine, at least he doesn't identify as a as a female as I know it. Uh, happiest medley of Kingdom Hearts, that was an that was an interesting one and a new uh, a new medley that they added. Oh, and they, I forgot, Hollow Bastion. The Hollow Bastion, yo, the Hollow Bastion song was so good. Like, the the drums were really, like, they were really going on that one. Uh, so part two, after the intermission, there's De Dark Impetus, Rage Awakened, Distant From You, Scala Ad Kylum, Edge of Existence, Heart As One, and the last, or no, the, the second last part is a Forza Finale. And then March Caprice for Melody of Memory. Which I believe Yoko Shimamura participated in that one. I gotta pause the music because this is DMCA. So for the last song here, uh, they had our uh, Yoko Shimamura uh, played in this one, the piano. She wanted to like... She wanted to kind of like, you know... Like participate. <laughs> but she wasn't... She's not like a professional pianist. So obviously for, for the rest of all other parts, she left it to another pianist to uh, play. But for this one, she she learned the piece to play with the, with the band. And that was cool. Um, about the encore. So the encore is unlisted. And the two pieces that they played, the two pieces that they played in the encore was the um, the Chikai uh, orchestra version. Uh, Chikai is a uh, don't think twice. I think in English. So they played that one, and then uh, they also played the Kingdom Hearts Four trailer music. 
And we actually have an official name for it. The official name for the Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer music is Reality in the Dark. Ooh. I wonder why it's called Reality in the Dark. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I didn't really... I saw someone tweet about how the song was a little different. I didn't really find it too different than what the trailer had played. In my opinion, I thought it was pretty much the same as the trailer. Um, but... The thing, the thing, oh shit, a good thing the thing with the bottle was covered. The thing that was interesting, chat, okay? Here's the thing that was interesting, okay? I turned the page, right? And on this page, okay? You see this? On this page is the music commentary for all of the songs. And only one of the songs is question mark one of the songs is question mark right and they only they played two songs okay and one of the songs is question mark the, the question mark song in this page here is talking about reality in the dark so if i read this segment here which i did at the at the concert but i'll read it to you guys now if i read this Listen to this, okay? I'll try and translate it for you. Uh, if my translation is shoddy, uh, don't, 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 don't fight me. I, I, I try my best, okay? <laughs> okay, so it says, uh, Sekai, Sekai Hatsu Engi des. Sekai Hatsu Engi des. Uh, this is the first world performance of this piece. Sakukyaku ga taihen deshita ne. The making or the composition, uh, composing this piece was really difficult. Motomoto, konna kanji ni shite hoshi te yu sanko kyaku o morate dan desu ga. Usually, they would, in the past, they would, uh, give me a song reference to kind of, uh, base, to kind of base my. Uh, so, like, in the past, they would give me a song reference to kind of refer off to, uh, the feeling, uh, of what type of song they wanted in the past, but... Uh, mama ni suru to ni ban, uh, da shi, somo somo kingdom hearts poku nai. Uh, and then in this fashion, uh, uh, the second, this is the second, I guess this is like the second, uh, like it two, two times, it, or, hmm, I can't really figure out how to say, how to read this sentence. So no mama ni suru to, uh, and in this way, and then ni ban mae. G dashi. So the the two the two games in the in the death coming or before uh, don't really sound Kingdom Hearts or something like that. Like the the song maybe the songs that she got as a reference they don't sound very Kingdom Hearts. Doreo Nina. Uh, so, oh, sore o kami, uh, poite to yu ka jibun no naka de san ko kyoku no fuinti o imeji shi susu. Um, uh, so in this way, uh, sinking my teeth into it, or to say that. <coughs> Uh, to try and imagine uh, how how the song, what the feeling of the song is, uh, while doing all of that, uh, I watashi ga Kingdom Hearts yo no kyoku toshite 
書いたらどうなるんだろうと思う浮かべながら作りました。Uh, Kingdom Hearts, how to make this sound, Kingdom Hearts?、Uh, how to make this sound like a Kingdom Hearts song?、Uh, I try to write the, from that perspective, I guess. It's like a rough. Uh, a rough idea of what I think is what the thing says.、Uh, based off of the writing. And I guess to summarize, she, she essentially got like in the past,、uh, she received a lot of reference、uh, songs on how to like, how they wanted the song to sound like. So maybe the team was like, hey, we want your music to sound like. This composer, or like we saw this movie and we wanted the song to sound like this track. So they'll give her like a couple of songs. But then, um, I think <clears throat> it says something like, I don't really understand this sentence, but the rest of it was like, oh, uh, something that's Kingdom Hearts like. Like, I wanted to try and make something that was Kingdom Hearts like while still referring to the ideas that、uh, she was given as a reference. Which kind of makes sense because a lot of people did notice that this is a very Marvel and very John Williams style, like big Hollywood style、uh, track. But it still somehow fit in the Kingdom Hearts like. The construct of the Kingdom Hearts music、uh, thematic, which is really impressive for Yoko Shimomura. But it makes me wonder like, oh, what kind of track did they ask her to like? What kind of track was the reference then? Like, what were they asking her to refer to? Were they telling her, please make a, a, a reference to Hollywood movies? Because If you hear the track, the Kingdom Hearts 4 track, it is very like Avengers. It's so Avengers. Or like Star Wars, you know? And that's pretty big hype for everybody who's like, oh, is Star Wars gonna be in Kingdom Hearts 4? Is, uh, is, uh, uh, Avengers gonna be in Kingdom Hearts 4? I feel like anything's possible right now, because they had Wreck It Ralph in Kingdom Hearts、uh, Union Cross. And in Wreck It Ralph, like, You could branch out into other video games from that world because that's the lore of Wreck It Ralph. So they included Wreck It Ralph. Who knows where they can branch off now that they're in the reality zone, you know? So that was neat.、Uh, and then they have the credits here. Oh, you can't see that part because my hand's in the way. Okay, and then we have a little cheersy here to tell you about the inspiration. And this part is just kind of like a summary of the game. So it has like all the pictures of the covers.、Uh, and then just like a little summary of the, the game here, like the story. Uh, so it's kind of like that. You can see, like,、um, all of the games are like that. Very So it kind of goes through, it's just like a summary of all of the games. Like, this one is Kingdom Hearts 2 here, so you can see Kingdom Hearts 2. And then it has a little summary, like, of the plot. And then they go to like 358 and a half days. Sorry if the camera's not focusing. Focus. That and then they, they go through like all the games, like Recoded,、uh, and then Birth by Sleep, 
I have that here too. Oh, uh, there's Aqua. I was trying to get to Aqua. <laughs> Make sure Aqua is represented. Uh, they have Dream Drop Distance. Like a little summary about that here. Um, the interesting part about this is that they wrote it in like a perspective. So here it said like, Story by Riku. And then in the Birth by Sleep when they said Story by Aqua. I thought that was really neat. So I guess maybe if I want to get a summary of the games, <laughs> I could read it. And then here they have like a thing about the the small stuff like the Fragmentary Passage, Kingdom Hearts, uh, Union Cross or Back Cover and all of that. Like they have a little segment about that as well in case you needed a refresher. <laughs> but what happened? Oh, it's not focusing, sorry. Uh, it doesn't want to focus. <laughs> it doesn't want to focus. But yeah, this is the Kingdom Hearts Union Cross section. And then they have... Uh, they even have a summary section for Kingdom Hearts 3. With Kairi here. So that's cool. They have that. They show everybody. Everybody is back! <laughs> Everybody's back. And they have Melodies of Memories here. And then Dark Road here. Sorry, I'm trying to get the camera to focus. And then here's the Kingdom Hearts 4 artwork. Um, oh, sorry for the janky camera work. <laughs> So it's kind of like that. They have the Kingdom Hearts artwork here. Of all the characters. They have the bad guys down here too. Uh, and then there's a picture of the World Trez, I think. When they went to the World Tour. It's an advertisement for the, the vinyl CD or the vinyl box. <laughs> it's an advertisement. So this is going to come out, I think, uh, March? Uh, tomorrow. It's going to be on sale tomorrow, apparently. This thing here. So yeah, that's the pamphlet. I really, really thought this was a really good purchase at the concert because not only is it like the paper is fancy, it's like a glossy finish, just really high quality produced a print job and it's hardcover. So I think this is really, this is really good. Like, I am very impressed by the production value of this pamphlet. As a, as a person who used to work for, like, clubs and stuff and uni designing stuff like this, like brochures and pamphlets for tw uh, concerts and shows, like, I thought this was really neat. I thought it was a really, really fun concert. I was super happy with, like, everything. Like, the music was just so good. I was crying so much. <laughs> <laughs> Just tears running down my eyes every time. I'm like, Roxas. <laughs> I think everybody else in the in the. May your heart be your guiding. May your heart be your guiding key. Thank you for the five biddies. Arigato. I think everybody else was also feeling it when we were listening to uh, all of the music. <clears throat> Oh my god, everybody, like, there's already YouTube videos about people being like... CONCERNING! <laughs> there is concerning news about Kingdom Hearts. It's facing a direction change for the future. <laughs> Everyone is, like, having a panic attack by, uh, Nomura's, uh... <laughs> I think... 
I think, uh, so based on my impressions, chat, based on my impressions, whatever Nomura was saying is just trolling. It's just, it's just trolls. I think the only thing we can take away is, uh... The only thing we can take away from the... From the... Most of his comments is that... A. Kingdom Hearts Missing Link is coming out soon. And that they managed to, uh... Make something happen... That is allowing them... To... Do something amazing for Kingdom Hearts. And... It is so amazing... That Yoko Shimamura was not aware of it, and that he had to tell her behind the scenes. Hello, everybody. It's post editing crazy here. Since I was at the concert with Namura as a special guest, I can give you a first hand account of what happened and how I interpreted the conversation with him, Hamazu, and Shimamura. As well as report on the audience reactions. Kind of give you uh, more context to the comment that is kind of circulating around in the Twitterverse, in the Kingdom Hearts fandomverse, especially in the English side of things. Let me just kind of retell the concert event to you guys. So first off, we were expecting to see Nomura. Nomura didn't have anything uh, important to show us. So we weren't really expecting a lot. Uh, there were some special guests in the audience that when they got mentioned, they stood up in their chair, the spotlight kind of comes down onto them and everyone clapped. Um, and then they sat down and enjoyed their show. A, a, that she finally introduces Nomura onto the stage and my god, the audience was like was like it, imagine those anime characters being surprised and shocked like that was literally the entire audience we were all shocked <laughs> we we're all like eh, much <laughs> we were all very very surprised correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure it was hamazu or hazama okay so i just did the google search and the brand manager's name is ichiro hazama so excuse me for uh wrong information there so they brought him and namura onto the stage uh yokushima Mura. right away the tone was very uh comical right away the tone was kind of like it was a comedy act almost namura uh, uh I, I mean uh yokushima Mura tried to give Tetsuya Nomura a lot of space to talk uh, as if inviting him to spill some beans and they had like a little joke about or teasing if you will about um, the time limit that they have because they did, uh, Nomura didn't want to go over time with the concert I don't think Yokoshima Nomura wanted to either but she's very excited to hear news from him so she kept chiding him to kind of encourage him to say more things but namura was trying to you know persuade her not to uh not to get him too excited because he does have a lot to say like he has a lot of things he wants to tell us the audience but uh the concert was not the right time or the right place is uh, a very typical japanese response to uh <laughs> questioning here and i believe he then started teasing about how he's so busy oh wow what a busy man he's so busy though he can't really talk very much and he has nothing to say he he clarified once again he was not going to make any special announcements nothing important was going to be delivered through the concert and he re gurgitated that rhetoric again when he got on stage so he literally just says i don't know why we're here we're very busy and uh, i know some of you are thinking why are you here but uh, like why are you namura here but i honestly don't have anything to say so i probably won't be here for long so uh yoko shimamura kind of uh kind of teased namura about his outfit I couldn't really see very well. Like, I obviously have glasses. 
And I was very far back in the audience, so I couldn't see him very well. The way he looked, he looked like he dressed like cosplay, like he was wearing Sora's outfit, but I'm pretty sure anybody who's ever met Nomura knows that Nomura just literally dresses like his characters, like... <laughs> The same shorts, the same t-shirt, shirt, jacket thing, he wears that. That's his outfit. But he had like, they were saying he had a sticker on him for backstage access. Because apparently, what, when, like before or earlier, um, he was getting stopped everywhere he went. And they were kind of making fun of him about that. Like, oh, ho, ho, you have a nice outfit on. And he's like, yeah, well... I kept getting stopped and I couldn't move, so I had to put this on. So, um, that was, uh, that was, uh, one of the funny comedy moments there. And then he then said something that was very, very Monka S, uh, for everybody in the audience. So we all, we, everyone in the audience was kind of like, looking at each other kind of like holding our breaths because he said the reason he was at the concert was because Sora was there. And you know, you know Nomura. Nomura is a very cryptic man. So when he said that, we all thought like... Well, I, I thought. I don't know about we all thought, but I thought like Sora was gonna beam himself down like... Be me down, Scotty, like, just gonna descend from the ceiling, augmented reality, virtual reality style, like, like, a projector was gonna come down, and Sora's just gonna be like, Yahoo, Minna! Like, he's just gonna show up in the middle of the audience, like, but, apparently, he then clarified that, um, Miu Irino, the voice actor for Sora in Japanese, uh, was present in the audience, and... That's when everybody was like, "What?" <laughs> we were we were surprised that Namura was in the audience, but then we were even more surprised that Miu Irino was also there. And so, like my entire, like literally my entire row, we all like kind of st stood up a little bit to look, like not fully stand up, but just like a little bit to like turn our heads around and be like, "Where, where, where's me? Where's Miu Irino?" Because they turned on the spotlights, the lighting stage crew. We're trying to find him in the audience. Because I maybe they didn't realize that he was in the audience ahead of time. And so they didn't get his seat. So they didn't know where to point the spotlight. But like eventually, after a couple minutes of looking, he stood up. Or maybe not a couple minutes, but a couple of moments later, he stood up. He took off his hat like and his mask and like did a little bow and like a wave to Nomura and uh, Shimura. They were like, Sora's here. <laughs> they was very impromptu. I didn't know, like... Yeah. I think even Yoko Shimamura was surprised. So that's why I kind of felt, oh, like maybe he was here as like a personal thing. Like he likes the game as a fan. Like he himself is a fan. So after that whole... whole surprise with Sora voice actor also being present in the audience uh we then yeah they they also made a conversation about like the news like we we, we had a celebration last year for the 20th anniversary just down the street because the concert was held in shibuya so the anniversary event was held also in shibuya so it's like literally across the street from each other the two venues and then they ha uh, Haza, hazama and uh, Tachiya and Nomura were kind of talking with each other about this, like, tondemonai koto. Uh, like, something really big happened. Uh, an event happened. And that, like, from that event, something, something big occurred. And it felt like insider kind of things, like behind closed doors, something happened. And something is cooking. And they wanted to leak that information, but they felt like the timing of the concert wasn't a good place to make that presentation and Yoko Shimamura was eh? wait am I out of the loop do I not know what you're talking about I feel like I don't know what you're talking about like perplexed and so she asked you know trying to invite them to talk about it so that we can know about it because if she doesn't know we don't know and she wants to know just as much as we want to know so she invites them to tell her in front of the audience so that we know but then of course they said 
Oh, we will tell you backstage because you're Yoko Shimamura. You're part of the team. We'll tell you. We won't tell uh, the audience. Azama and uh, Namura do a little more of an extended conversation about like what their plans for this year is because they don't really have anything to announce. They were like, oh, we don't really have anything. Uh, just please look forward to Missing Link. Missing Link, we hope to get that out this year. Uh, so there, there's our little, there's our little, uh, hope there. So fingers crossed. Fingers crossed that Missing Link comes out this year. That is a, a promise or an intention. An intention to have that come out. Whether or not it does come out depends on the development cycle. Like, is someone gonna get COVID and push back the development because they have to shut down the office? Uh, is uh, there gonna be an earthquake that happens? Knocking on wood because I don't want an earthquake to happen. But there an earthquake that's gonna make it like, you know, push back the... Uh, <laughs> development time we don't know so hopefully they deliver on that promise and things go according to keikaku oh and the final part that was really funny was uh how at the end <laughs> namura then abruptly demands almost in a like almost demanding yoko shimamura but obviously asking please make the music for missing link the yoko shimamura and namura and uh hazama have been like kind of joking back and forth to each other like almost like they were like at a drinking party almost like that's the vibe like they all seem very close they all seem like they were having a good time and <laughs> namura was kind of like in passing like hey can you just make the music i know you're busy doing a concert right now but I'm also busy making the game. Like, please make the music for my game. <laughs> it just felt really silly <laughs> to make that demand on stage and not in a former email. I'm sure they they gone through that whole professional process behind the doors. Like, they got the emails, they got the contract. I'm sure legally and like behind doors, they have that all sorted out. But it was just funny to see that on stage, just like, yeah, make the music for me, please. Thanks, bye. <laughs> And she just has to be like, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> sure, sure. Not like I don't make all the music already. <laughs> yeah, Namura kind of just... Namura and uh, Hazaba just kind of like talked about the 20th anniversary. They thanked the fans. They, they said like, yeah, thank you, Yoko Shimura, for making the music. Um, you're doing a great job. We're really busy now, so we gotta go. Everybody in the audience, thanks for coming. Thanks for being fans thanks for supporting uh please go home safely <laughs> we won't be here in the in the nighttime show so take care i mean like <laughs> do your best in the night show because we're not gonna be here we're too busy making a video game like ha 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 <laughs> and that was kind of the uh whole conversation um overall the uh the conversation was a very positive conversation lots of exciting things to look forward to that wasn't disclosed because he didn't have time because he's so busy gosh darn it but <laughs> we will be hearing more from it in time and uh very excited to uh you know, look forward to the future of Kingdom Hearts. It looks like it's going to be really awesome because Namura seems to be very optimistic, especially with that Tondemonai Koto that happened. <laughs> it seemed to be something uh, stress relieving for him to have that occur. So I'm very, very uh, optimistic about the outcome of Kingdom Hearts. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. And if you want to leave a comment about uh, the uh, Nomura comment, what do you think big event occurred that allowed Nomura to bring great news to us Kingdom Hearts fans? Leave a comment below what your speculations are. I would love to hear it. And... Uh, I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye, Panda Genus!